Substitution for the Jags, number seven, Hayden, as well as number 17, Claire. Jaguar throwing. Warrior throw in. Again, senior parents, please make your way over to the east gate for senior night. Attention, all senior parents, please make your way over to the southwest corner of the stadium for senior night. Jaguar free kick. Jaguar throw in.
Destroyer free kick. Who's doing that? That's cash. <laughs> so Katie Compton's pretty much hundred percent. Okay, good. Uh, Porter is not. Okay. And probably's not going to get any better. Okay. So she had a deep bone bruise as well. I just talked to her parents, her mom, and she said she had she got the thing.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ankeny Centennial High School, where this evening it is my pleasure to introduce you to our senior girls soccer players. Starting first with Bryn Anderson. Bryn is the daughter of Brian and Lisa Anderson. She has been playing soccer for nine years. Her most memorable moments are the soccer tournaments. Bryn plans to get her real estate license following, her, following graduation. Our next senior is Narman Balakashieva. Narman is the daughter of Emily Forrester. She has been playing soccer for one year. Her most moments are practicing in the gym because of bad weather. Narman plans to attend college and major in computer science. Ladies and gentlemen, Narman Balakashieva. Next up is Taylor Betchen. Taylor is the daughter of Leslie and Todd Betchen. She has been playing soccer for five years. Her most memorable moments are the celebrations and team dinners. Taylor plans to attend the University of Dubuque to play volleyball and major in criminal justice. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Betchen. Kate Bergen. Kate is the daughter of Angela and Travis Bergen. She has been playing soccer for 13 years. Her most memorable moment was beating Valley in PKs and winning the state tournament. Kate plans to attend Kate plans to attend Carnegie Mellon University to play soccer and double major in chemical engineering and biomedical engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Bergen. Our next senior is Katie Compton. Katie is the daughter of Chris and Kim Compton. She has been playing soccer for 14 years. Her most memorable moment was winning a state championship with her best friends and the bus rides home with the team. Katie plans to attend St. Cloud State University to play soccer and major in business. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Compton. Next up is Ella Hudacek. Ella is the daughter of Debbie and Kevin Hudacek. She has been playing soccer for 13 years. Her most memorable moment was winning a state championship. Ella plans to attend Iowa State University and major in business. Ladies and gentlemen, Ella Hudacek. And next is Hannah Kurth. Hannah is the daughter of Aaron and Ryan Kurth. She has been playing soccer for four years. Her most memorable moment was scoring a goal in practice. Hannah plans to attend the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs and play recreational soccer. Ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Kurth. Next, we have Alana Pennington. Alana is the daughter of Jack and Pascal Pennington. She has been playing soccer for 13 years. Her most memorable moment was winning state and celebrating that moment with her team on the bus ride home. Alana plans to attend Western Illinois University to play soccer and major in biology to become a dentist. Ladies and gentlemen, Alana Pennington. And next is Avery Porter. Avery is the daughter of Stacy and Josh Porter. She has been playing soccer for 14 years. Her most memorable moment was beating Valley in PKs scoring two goals in the state championship and putting on the pink shirt with her teammates. Avery plans to attend William Jewell College to play basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, Avery Porter. And our final senior this evening, Eliza, Eliza Johanna Katt. Eliza is the daughter of Mary Mayath and Johanna Katt. She has been playing soccer for one year. Her most memorable moments are starting the season with her teammates and they were so welcoming which made playing fun. This year was... This year was my first time playing soccer, and my teammates helped me better understand the game. Aliza plans to attend college and major in ling linguistics. Ladies and gentlemen, Aliza Johanna Katt. And one more time, Jaguar fans, big round of applause for our senior girls soccer players. Ladies, thank you so much for your contributions over the years. Good luck with your future endeavors. And remember, once a Jaguar, always a Jaguar. Soccer coverage on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, All-Star Concrete, Lincoln Savings Bank, member FDIC, Fiscus Jewelers, 
The Zoom Room Dog Training, Nick Tarash Fitness, Mackerball 118, Wendy Thompson and Affiliate of Humble Travel, and Reed Plumbing. Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, Weikert Realtors, the 515 Agency, 72 Degrees, your comfort company, Sinorama Ankeny, West 40 Market, Rainbow of the Heartland, Prairie Trail Sports Complex. Arts of Ankeny Animal Hospital, the Ankeny Real Estate Group, and Cabaret Sports Bar and Grill. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Everything we do is here to benefit the client. Every decision that's needed to be made, the first question you should ask is, does this, does this benefit the client and is this the best thing for the client? Our goal is to make a difference. We have the tools, resources, training, and leadership to make a difference in our agents' lives and their careers. And then they can then take that to make a difference in their clients' lives and ultimately make a difference in our communities. We are available basically 24-7 to make sure that our agents are getting the support they need um, to look like a million bucks in front of their clients. DeArmond certified used vehicles aren't the same as the rest. Every DeArmond certified vehicle receives a 175 point inspection and comes with a 12 month, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty and DeArmond care. Wheel, dent, windshield repair, repel paint and windshield protection and a full tank of fuel. Buy with confidence, knowing you made a wise decision with DeArmond Certified. Find DeArmond Certified used vehicles at DeArmondFord.com.
Soccer coverage on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, All Star Concrete, Lincoln Savings Bank, member FDIC, Fiscus Jewelers, The Zoom Room Dog Training, Nick Jarosh Fitness, Mackerball 118, Wendy Thompson and Afraid of Humble Travel, and Reed Plumbing. Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, Weikert Realtors, the 515 Agency, 72 Degrees, your comfort company, Sinorama Ankeny, West 40 Market, Rainbow of the Heartland, Prairie Trail Sports Complex, Arts of Ankeny Animal Hospital, the Ankeny Real Estate Group, and Cabaret Sports Bar and Grill. So when an athlete walks into Nick Karash Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching, we have the best technology, we have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Everything we do is here to benefit the client. Every decision that's needed to be made, the first question you should ask is, does this, does this benefit the client and is this the best thing for the client? Our goal is to make a difference. We have the tools, resources, training, and leadership to make a difference in our agents' lives and their careers. And then they can then take that to make a difference in their clients' lives and ultimately make a difference in our communities. We are available basically 24-7 to make sure that our agents are getting the support they need um, to look like a million bucks in front of their clients. De Armand certified used vehicles aren't the same as the rest. Every De Armand certified vehicle receives a 175 point inspection and comes with a 12 month, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, and De Armand care. Wheel, dent, windshield repair, repel paint and windshield protection, and a full tank of fuel. Buy with confidence, knowing you made a wise decision with De Armand certified. Find De Armand certified used vehicles at DeArmandFord.com. It is senior night on the north side of Ankeny. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Centennial Digital on the Central Iowa Sports Network, driven by Freedom Tire. Today and always, our pregame show is brought to you by Signorama in Ankeny. Signorama Ankeny is your full-service sign and graphics company. We design, produce, and install all types of exterior and interior signs. Graphics for vehicles, including vehicle wraps, walls, windows, and doors. We also do banners, yard signs, business cards, real estate signs, trade show and exhibit displays, flags, and more. Call us at 515-216-1240 or visit www.sinorama-ankeny.com. Number 10, Waukee, is in town tonight, getting set to take on the Jaguars in this final regular season tune-up before the postseason starts late next week. The Jaguars rank number eight in the latest Iowa Girls high school athletic union poll tonight uh, it's beautiful weather man we've struggled through some brutal games so far this year but tonight makes up for all that it's just a shade under 70 degrees the wind is just a 
breath of wind out of the northwest and it is absolutely gorgeous here on the north side of Ankeny. You still have time to get out here. We've got about five minutes till kickoff and we'll have the starting lineups and all that to go as well. And it will be just a great night for soccer and it should be a very entertaining game as well. We want to be sure and thank Lamberti, Goki, and Lucci Law for presenting our boys and girls soccer coverage all season long. A community driven law firm with passion for giving back. LGL Law is a team to not only fit the legal needs of our community members, but also support the things that make Ankeny a great place to live, work, and play. Austin Oliver making his way into the studio. Jordan Burns, the coach, will be in here shortly, and we'll be back with our starting lineups brought to you by 72 Degrees. This has been the Sinorama Ankeny pregame show. Back after this. Soccer coverage on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, All-Star Concrete, Lincoln Savings Bank, member FDIC, Fiscus Jewelers, The Zoom Room Dog Training, Nick Jarosh Fitness, Macarball 118, Wendy Thompson and Afraid of Humble Travel, and Reed Plumbing. Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, Weikert Realtors, the 515 Agency, 72 Degrees, your comfort company, Sinorama Ankeny, West 40 Market, Rainbow of the Heartland, Prairie Trail Sports Complex, Hearts of Ankeny Animal Hospital, the Ankeny Real Estate Group, and Cabaret Sports Bar and Grill. When an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Everything we do is here to benefit the client. Every decision that's needed to be made, the first question you should ask is, does this, does this benefit the client and is this the best thing for the client? Our goal is to make a difference. We have the tools, resources, training, and leadership to make a difference in our agents' lives and their careers. And then they can then take that to make a difference in their clients' lives and ultimately make a difference in our communities. We are available basically 24-7 to make sure that our agents are getting the support they need um, to look like a million bucks in front of their clients. It's a beautiful night here at the North Ankeny Soccer Pitch at Centennial High School. We have a great game tonight between the number eight rank, number eight ranked uh, Ankeny Centennial Jaguars and number 10th ranked Waukee Warriors. We're going to jump in with the PA announcer for tonight's lineups. We'll be right back with you in a second. Thank you once more to our senior girls soccer players for all your contributions this season. Without further ado, let's introduce you to our visiting players from Waukee. Number zero at goal, sophomore Lauren Knighty. Number two, sophomore Lainey Haviland. Number three, junior Rita Danner. Number four, junior McKay Coleman. 
Number eight, freshman Josie Muehlhoff. Number 11, senior Molly Dickey. Number 12, junior Taryn Hunt. Number 14, junior Allie McCoy. Number 16, junior Eva Larson. Number 22, freshman Stella Braddock. And number 15, sophomore Audrey Woods. Warriors are coached by James Brooke with the assistance of Adam Matlock, Jonathan Kerr, Matty Alvarado. Warrior manager is Lauren Danner. And Jaguar fans, it is now time to introduce you to your starting lineup. Number three, senior Alana Pennington. Number four, Junior Avery Lewis. Number seven, sophomore Madison Balashitis. Number nine, senior Ella Hudacek. Number 10, sophomore Olivia Kroska. Number 11, senior Avery Porter. Number 12, a freshman Emery Becker. Number 16, sophomore Ava Martin. Number 21, senior Katie Compton. Number 23, freshman Evie Boyle. And in goal for the Jaguars this evening, a senior, number 99, Kate Bergen. Jaguars are coached by head coach Chris Allen with the assistance of Peter Rame, Alyssa Amundsen, and Danielle uh, Starting lines for tonight's game brought to you by 72 Degrees, the comfort company. We'll be right back Ladies after and gentlemen, the at this time, it Soccer coverage on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, All-Star Concrete, Lincoln Savings Bank, member FDIC. Fiscus Jewelers. The Zoom Room Dog Training. Nick Jarosh Fitness. Mackerball 118. Wendy Thompson, an affiliate of Humble Travel. And Reed Plumbing. Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, Weikert Realtors, the 515 Agency, 72 Degrees, your comfort company, Sinorama Ankeny, West 40 Market, Rainbow of the Heartland, Prairie Trail Sports Complex. Arts of Ankeny Animal Hospital, the Ankeny Real Estate Group, and Cabaret Sports Bar and Grill. And we're back. This is Austin Oliver here for Centennial Digital, driven by Freedom Tire. It's the final game of the regular season as both teams are taking the field. We'll have Waukee Warriors on the right side in white going to the left and the Centennial Jaguars, your home team, on the left going to the right in all black. 40 minutes are on the clock and both teams are taking the field. You are watching Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital, driven by Freedom Tire. Visit one of our six locations for all of your automotive and tire service needs. Teams are ready to go. Jaguar fans, make some noise. 
The Warriors will be in possession of the ball first. Number 15, Audrey Woods, a sophomore center forward. We'll put the ball back into play. And we're going. Be interested to see tonight how the Jaguars play it with the uh, state pairings already set. A uh, couple of girls coming off of injury. Uh, mainly uh, number 21, Katie Compton, and Avery Porter on uh, both of the outside attacking forwards. Be interested to see how Coach Allen plays that tonight and if he's a little bit uh, careful with, with two of his players as we head into the state tournament late next week. Warriors a couple early balls, uh, getting control of it and just sending it into the offensive zone for themselves. It's easily corralled by the defensive back line for the Jaguars, and they've been able to send it up front. Avery Porter with her first touch of the night on the far side. She gets by her defender. Going to take a shot here, early shots. Crosses it right into the front, and it's Katie Compton with a goal! Off of the assist from Avery Porter. 1-0, one, one minute and 17 seconds into the game. Katie Compton. A reporter making her presence felt early in the game by beating her defender on that far side and then looked none the worse for wear as she beat her and got a good cross right across the front. And Katie Compton with the put in right at the goal line. Ball sent out of bounds. It'll be a Warrior throw in. Number 11, Molly Deke, throwing it in for the Warriors. Ball rolls out the back of the pitch. It'll be a free kick for the Jaguars. Kate Bergen with the put back into play. Bergen takes it short to Balashitis. Balashitis starts to move it up the field. Pennington with the first touch of her match, of the match for her. Compton sending it to some open space for Porter. Porter's on top of it. She's going to get one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. It's a little bit too hot, strong on the touch. First touch goes right to the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper puts it right back into play. Excellent opportunity again for Porter on a pass from Katie Compton into space, trying to repay, repay the assist in the first minutes of the game. Jaguar throw in. Pennington, nice move behind her back. Sends it out to Compton on the outside. Compton, one touch, and tries to get around that defender. She does so and gains herself a corner. It's the first corner kick of the game. Corner kicks are brought to you by Iowa Rush Soccer Club. Check out other events going on right now at iowarush.com. Corner kick coming up for the Jags. I think that's Avery Lewis going over to take the corner for the Jaguars. Katie Compton looking to take the ball short, but looks like Avery Lewis is uh, going to put that ball in long. 
as she does take it short sends it back to Lewis Lewis is gonna send it in for a center a little bit off to the right side but a nice little one two give and go there between Compton and Lewis Strong kick from 22. Stella Braddock puts the ball back into play. We check with a nice settle. Gets it up to Compton. Compton takes the foul. It'll be a free kick about 40 yards out for the Jaguars. Be Ella Hudacek putting the ball back into play. Referee trying to get in a position. Calls for the ball. Oh, Shida steps up on the defense from the Warriors. It's the ball to Lewis. Lewis to Pennington. Back to Lewis. Warriors send it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Jags. Pennington takes it quickly, gets it to Lewis. Crosscut probing, sends it back out to Lewis. Evie Boyle with one of her first touches of the match. She gives up the ball, but gets it, uh, luckily gets it back. Hudicek kind of sends a light ball back to Bergen. Bergen steps out, gets some action here early here for the match. Lewis with a nice ball into Martin. Martin settles it down. Gets it to Hudicek. Hudicek with some nice space up here. He's going to get it to Compton on the far side. Back to Hudicek. Emery Becker. And a kind of mishappened shot there from Porter. Lucky goalie takes it short. Jaguars are all over her as she takes that first step. Balashitis takes a big step up from her back center fall position and sends it into Porter. Porter touches it. Weak shot to the goal is gobbled up by the Warrior goalkeep. That's Laura Knighty, one of the captains for the Warriors. Nice header from Becker. Shot from Pennington, right at the goalkeep. There's no problem with that one. But possession all on the Jaguar side so far in the match. A little bit of possession here for the Warriors. They send it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Jaguars. 
Sounds like Andy from Friday night. Uh, we have some uh, announcing uh, buildup uh, to get done tonight. Uh, sound like the uh, youngsters did a good job on Friday night with some enthusiasm and uh, uh, doing the best they could on Friday. Good to see some other people out there doing it. Katie Compton with the first goal of the game. That was her seventh goal of the season. Like I said earlier, both her and Porter are just coming back from some knee injuries that they occurred earlier in the season. So it's been a while since both of them have been out on the field and feeling good about themselves. It looks to, to be a good connection for them as they scored both of them uh, combined together to score that first goal. It's a 1-0 lead for the Jaguars. Ten minutes into the first half. Balashitis with a nice carry. Sends it up to Porter. Porter does a nice job of chasing that one down and gets a deflection off of her. Goes out the backside of the pitch. It'll be a free kick for the Warriors. If you're looking for a place to train, you're looking for an opportunity to get better, we can help you do that. Nick Jarosh with Nick Jarosh Fitness. We'll see you there. Checking into the game for the Warriors, number 20, Jade Thacker. Got a substitution in, number 20, Jade Thacker, and a sophomore center forward into the game. Substitution in today's game are brought to you by Dr. Stacy Munger and the crew of Heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital. Balashad has taken some abuse from the uh, walkie forward, sends it back to Bergen. Bergen settles it down, sends it out to Hudicek. Nice deflection by the Warrior offensive player. Goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw-in for the Warriors. The furthest for possession for the Warriors here right now. Number 11, Molly Deek. Throw-in for the Warriors. Sends it back out. It'll be another throw-in for the Warriors. Two of the Rush uh, ball girls are right there, ready to go. Got that ball in immediately to the throw-in gal. Katie Compton takes it upfield. Kate Bergen steps up to take that one. She's going to put the ball back into play. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we see quite a few substitutions tonight and getting some of those starters out of the game, especially with this 1-0 lead so early in the game to... Uh, Make sure we keep everybody healthy as Porter uh, makes another run down the far side. He's got two people going down the middle and on the outside. She takes it herself, goes off of a Waukee Warrior defender, and she's able to get a foot back on it and kicks it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Jaguars. Pennington with a header. Martin with a header duck to Pennington. Settle down. Number two for the Warriors sends it out. Another header sends it back into towards the goal, but it goes out the back side of the pitch. We got number 23 for the Warriors coming in. Avery Baker, a sophomore, right back. And the game for the Warriors, number 23, Avery Baker. She'll replace number 16, Eva Larson. Knighty sends it back into play. Strong kick to the midfield. It's corralled by number eight. She gives up possession. Goes back to the defensive line of the Warriors.
Prosco with a nice snatch off of the foot of the Warrior uh, center center back and takes the ball up field. It's uh, once again stolen by the Warriors. Warriors trying to gain some possession here. Nice one-on-one -on -one defending for the Jaguars. Sends the ball back to the goalkeeper. Knighty will put it back into play again. Ooh, a shove there by Lauren. A Lewis gets uh, caught by the mid-ref, and that'll be a foul on her, her first of the game. It'll be a free kick for the Warriors, just over the half-field uh, mark. Definitely did not hide that one very well at all. <laughs> Trying to get that uh, position of the free kick coming up and just uh, shoved her out of the way, and she definitely got the ball, though. Porter with a nice defense there. Gets the ball, takes it down the sideline. Trying to look and see, get the rest of the offensive players caught up. Tries to get it over to Kitty Compton, but it's defensive stop there by number three, Rita Danner, one of the captains for the Warriors. Avery Lewis with a nice little slide of foot there and stole the ball right from out from under the Warrior offensive player. Kroska sends the ball into Porter. Porter with a nice job of settling that one down. And 23 for the Warriors. Able to get back to Avery Baker just into the game. Was able to just get enough of a possession on that to get it out. And then the Jaguars gain possession again as they try to move up the field. They're cycling it across the back line. Lewis tries to send it across on a center, and it's knocked off one of the Warrior defensemen, and it goes out of bounds. Got some wholesale changes coming in for the Jaguars. Number 22, uh, Addison Fair coming in. Number 20, Emily Conger coming in. And number 6, Gabby Lawrence all enter the game. Number 20, freshman Emily Conger. Substitutions tonight are brought to you by Dr. Stacy Munger and the crew at Heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital. Well, Shida sends the ball in. I think Addison Fair's light eyes just lit up there as that ball started to bounce highly across the front of the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper is able to come out and snag that one out of the air to prevent her from uh, getting a touch on that ball, but uh, she was ready to go on the far side. Gabby Lawrence sends the ball in just a little bit too strong, goes right by Avery Porter and goes out of bounds. Couple substitutions for the Warriors. Eva Lauren Larson back in again, and Audrey Woods back in again. Both the first substitutions coming back in. Both were starters tonight coming back onto the pitch. Stella Braddock puts the ball into play. Playing with fire here. That's a fair high ball, hits the goal post, it dinks off the left upright and goes out of bounds. Nice 50-50 ball won by number eight for the Warriors. It's taken back by the Jaguars as Pennington's got some control with some open space and moves up the field. Nice move to get by her defender. Gets into the center forward. Gabby Lawrence, and Lawrence loses possession of it. Back to Pennington. Pennington can take a shot, and it'll go off to the right side. It'll be a goal kick for the Warriors.
Braddock putting the ball back into play. Strong kick goes past midfield for her. Dangerous pass for Balashitis. It ends up working out for her as it just barely goes over the top of the center forward. Kudicek lets it roll a little bit too far, and it rolls right out of bounds as she struck it as it popped up out of bounds, and it'll be a throw-in for the Warriors. Pennington with a nice one-on-one -on -one win. Trying to get the ball out to Alice Safari. Alice Safari is tracking it down. Ends up getting it off of one of the defenders, and it rolls into the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper takes out very, very quickly for the Warriors. I think the Jaggers will be able to step up and steal that one back. Right back to Addison Fair. Addison's got some room to attack down to the goal or the uh, baseline here. She does so. Tries to send it off of a defender. Goes out of bounds. It'll be a free kick. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. I want to be sure and welcome um, and uh, some of our new supporters for Centennial Digital and the Jaguar Student Athletes, Dr. Brett Renzi at Health First Chiropractic, Springer Floor Care, and your local Ankeny Hy-Vee stores. Uh, Jaguars are consistently beating beating the Warriors to the 50-50 the, uh, balls. They're winning most of the 50-50 matchups, one-on-one matchups, just like a uh, situation right there where Porter just uh, wields her strength and is able to knock that defender off the ball and keep possession. They're quicker to the ball right now. They are uh, passing uh, efficiently and effectively. Senior, Katie, Compton. Katie Compton, number 21, back in the game. She'll be replacing Avery Porter for right now. Nice exchange of passes, a nice centered ball in there. Addison Fair gets a nice header on the ball. It's in, it's in a dangerous spot, and the goalkeeper for the Warriors ends up grabbing that ball in a really dangerous spot. I tell you what, Addison Fair just looks like a shark out there, just patrolling with a ton of speed there with those pink shoes. You just, uh, just uh, she's ready to just pounce on something, and did, she almost did so there with a header uh, from that center from the far side. Another nice ball centered in, sent back out. Be a throw in for the Warriors. Coach Burns just entered the box and he's got his headset on. I think he's still panting from uh, climbing up the stairs and running from his car from practice. So welcome, Coach Burns. Well, thank you, Austin. It's a long way. I just got done with Iowa Rush practice, and I'm here to help you out with the rest of the game now. Yeah, I got a 1-0 lead. I uh, had a nice uh, job by Porter. Just be the defender early, uh, just a minute 17 into the game. Had a nice cross, and uh, Katie Compton was just right on the doorstep and, and pounded one into the back of the, uh, of the net. So it's good to see... Both of the gals coming off of injuries are able to contribute really early in the game. 
Yeah, it's good to get them, see them back. I watched them play last week against Joaquin Northwest, and you can see they're we weren't quite at their hundred percent, but they're slowly getting back to hundred percent. So that's good to hear. Oh, Compton draws a foul on the far side. Get a free kick in a decent position right here. It's uh, probably about 30 yards out from the goalkeeper here. Looks like Pennington's going to be the one stepping up to take this. So, Coach, I was uh, wanted to start trying to think of some of the questions I was going to ask you when it got here. So we got this last game of the season, right? So we got, uh, you know, uh, state games coming up next week. You got, you know, a couple of gals coming off of injuries. Uh, opportunity maybe to get some younger girls with some experience here. And a, and, a, and a good game. Do you? How as a coach do you? Would you play a situation like this with some of your uh, starters? Um, I think you, you've just got to continue to uh, keep it as consistent as possible that you've done all season. Um, you know, keep, keep quality players on the on the field um, and, and get the win. Like Centennial need a win tonight. Um, they've had a couple of defeats um, recently um, in the CIML, so. If they can get a win tonight, it'll be a really big CIML win for them and, and, and kind of boost them maybe a little bit in the state rankings um, as they enter sub-state for next week. Yeah, a ton of possession for the Jaguars. They've been uh, stringing together a ton of passes. This is one of the very few instances of uh, possession for the Warriors at all so far in this match. I don't think we've had any shots on goal at all for the Warriors. But yeah, it's a, it's important not to take Walkie lightly. They they have a couple of players on their team that can um, shoot from distance. They can um, be a game changer. And, and at one zero, the game's never safe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no matter how much possession you have, um, you know, you switch off for half a second, the game could be tied back up again. Could be a little of that happening right now, as uh, like I said, as the Warriors are in there enjoying some of their best possession of the game just right in this uh, last few minutes. They'll get a free throw in there on the far side. Nice defensive play there. Gets it to Ava Martin in the middle. Would like to see her turn a little bit quicker on that and take it up the field and challenge that uh, middle defender, make her commit as, uh, as they moved up. But uh, Jaguars are doing a good job of still moving the ball up the field. Yeah, you mentioned the, the losses that the Jaguars have had this season. Um, I, I still think going into the state tournament, this is a really dangerous team and a team that can play with anybody that's out there right now. So, Yeah, definitely. I think the, the, the biggest thing that they need to um, get their mindset is just, you know, getting through the sub-state. Um, the, 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 ga the, game, the two games are not going to be um, a walk in the park. You know, if, if they do meet, um, I think it's Bettendorf. It's on the other side of the bracket and, and Prairie. Um, you know, both of those teams are historically been good. Um, Berendorf have two or three um, really exciting forwards that can win you win them a game. So it's important that you know Centennial, you know, don't look too far ahead right now. They they've got you know really important games coming up next week that they need to approach with the correct mindset and 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 not take it lightly because. Um, they're, they're tough. They're tough opponents, but at the same time, it's another. It's an opportunity for Centennial to reset as well. And and you know, post season, you, you can teams can just get in a run and go on a run and exactly. and be be a completely different team post season than they were um, in season. Porter with a nice little run, does a little hill drag to keep the ball in bounds. Porter takes on three people, gets the ball back out to Emily Conger, and Conger sends it into the middle. Uh, should have been a handball there, but the referee says play on. Distant shot from Balashitis, rolls out the back of the pitch. Yeah, just to kind of set up what that uh, sub-state uh, section looks like, we'll have Iowa City West up against uh, Des Moines Lincoln on the 19th, so that's next week at 7 o'clock. The winner of that one... We'll jump up and play 
play Ant uh, Ankeny Centennial on the 23rd at 7 o'clock. And like you said, the uh, back side of that, uh, the other side of that bracket is Bettendorf against Prairie, also playing on the 23rd at uh, 7 o'clock. And then the winner of those two will, will be playing for that uh, birth to the state tournament. Yeah, both Prairie and Bettendorf both have um, forwards on their team that are, you know, you know, they scored a lot of goals this season. Morgan Russman at Prairie and and uh, Carson Bonek Bohonek at Bettendorf. Both of them are very, very dangerous, fast, um, powerful strikers. So, um, if Centennial are lucky enough to get into that championship game, which I'm sure they will, um, you know, they've got to be ready for for one of those two teams. And check it back to the beginning for the Jaguars, number three, senior Alana Pennington. A lot of Pinton back into the game. The substitutions in today's game are brought to you by Dr. Stacy Munker and the crew at Heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital. Want to thank their sponsorship once again this whole year. It's a good attack there at the end from, from Centennial and uh, Porter was just trying to guide that header onto the onto the target. Just popped it wide, but this is a good position for Alana here. She looks to have a strike and. Friends, check out the new Zoom Room Dog Training Gym at 1875 North Ankeny Boulevard. We don't train dogs. We train the people that love them at the Zoom Room. Send us a pic of your dog at Jags Digital on Twitter or on our Centennial Digital Facebook page, and each week we will choose a pet of the week to get a special gift from the Zoom Room. Bonus points if they're watching Centennial Digital. That ball's going to spin, but that uh, goal keeps in the right spot at the right time. Is able to s snag that one out of the air. Katie Compton puts some pressure and gets a change of possession with a throw in on the far side. Yeah, you see um, Walkie were just trying to build out there from the goalkeeper, and um, it looks like you know Centennial are pressing high. They're trying to win the ball as high up the field as possible, um, and, and they've picked picked them off. Again, it's an opportunity in this situation maybe for Evie to come and take this throw in and put it in the box. Um, Walk here without um, one of their starting centre backs tonight, and Gentry Williams. So you know, th that would it's an opportunity to go and make that back line a little bit uncomfortable when they're missing a player of Gentry's quality. Well, you saw Evie Boyle just a few minutes ago take this near side throw in and just toss that ball about 40 yards. It seemed like. So yeah. I know you've been calling for that all season. Would have been yeah. a nice opportunity for her to jump over there and throw one in there as well. They, they've definitely, you know, we've not had a home game for a few weeks, but I have watched Centennial play a few times on the road, and especially last week, um, or just on Friday there against Walking Northwest. Evie did come up a lot and throw that ball in the box, and it was dangerous. And they almost scored a couple of goals from it. Um, you know, Centennial got their goal from a corner kick yep. um, off of Ava Martin, um, and they've, they've looked dangerous from set pieces. Laura here, proud to be the team for all your legal needs. Just a reminder to stick around after the game for the LGL Player of the Game. Go Jags! Got a couple substitutions coming in for the Warriors. Sydney Burrier, number five. Uh, Hannah Powers, number six and number 11. Molly Deke back into the game. She was one of the starters. Malachitis with some composure over there is able to uh, snag the ball off the feet of one of the Warrior uh, offensive players. I think just the presence of Porter and Compton on the field as well is just a complete game changer for Centennial. Just their experience and, and how they keep their shape. Yeah, Avery uh, was the one to put the ball in for the uh, Compton goal, and then about two minutes later, Compton came down the right side and almost put one in for Porter on the uh, on the left side. So it was good to see both of them playing the ball into space and uh, and getting a nice little attack uh, for each one of them on both sides of the ball. And I think that's the experience level that you know, your inexperienced mid forwards and your forwards don't necessarily play that ball into the space; they play it to the person and end up uh, playing the ball behind them or into where the defender's going to be, but playing it into space and letting the forward run underneath of it is a nice little opportunity for the Warriors as they get a center in. It's almost headed towards the uh, frame, but uh, trickles out of the backside. It goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Warriors. Yeah, it just came from a misplaced pass from Madison Balsharis. She just um, didn't connect with the ball, and they were very fortunate there not to concede a goal. The <coughs> walkie forward just didn't quite make the connection with it.
Compton may be able to run this one down. Nope, it's going to roll out of bounds here. Five minutes left to go here in the first half. It's a 1-0 lead for the Jaguars off of a Katie Compton score. Assist by Avery Porter. Just a minute 17 into the first half. The Jaguars, number 20, freshman Emily Conger. Emily Conger into the game. Coach Allen looks like he's dressed up for senior night tonight. He's looking good. He's definitely looking yeah. good. Yeah, he's looking sharp. So at the very least, Coach, I think we've been a little bit more liberal with the substitutions at the very least. We've been seeing, uh, like, I, I don't think I see um, Hudicek come out very often in the first half at least on that defending position, and he's kind of cycling some of those good girls through. We do have a, a quite of a ways of a wait before the, the uh, state game starts, so I guess we do get a good rest here as well. So I don't think he's really concerned about, you know, tiring out the gals and resting them before the match. I think we have another almost another 10 days before the next match. Bergen comes out, gets her hands on the ball, and the Warriors are trying to put that ball away, and it's still bouncing around. And the Jaguars get it out and are going to get control of it and able to reset again. Porter on the far side. Yeah, they've, they've got out of jail again there, the Jags. Um, they were really, really lucky not to concede their walkie. Just again, Kate Bergen just throwing herself in front of the ball, but here goes the Jags on the counterattack. Offsides call on Kitty Compton. It'll bring it back, and it'll be a Warrior free kick. Yeah, again, it's just it's just a, a lack of discipline from Centennial right now. I think you know at, at the at the end of a half when it's just one zero, sometimes it's smart just to tighten up a little bit, get more compact, and, and just see the half out. Um, you know, especially you know it's 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 a warm night tonight as well, and you want to try to serve some energy. You've just got to try to be able to change the rhythm of the game yeah. sometimes. and Sometimes it's not about scoring. It's about keeping possession yeah. and, and getting it, getting yourself into a good position going into the yeah. second half. Because so. you're not you're not going to get away with it every time. There's yeah. going to be a moment where, you know, and you just don't want to let the Warriors back into the game so easily yeah. by switching off. Give them some life. So, yeah, down on the baseline there was uh, Kitty Compton uh, knocked the ball off of her defender and will get a corner kick for the Jaguars. Avery Lewis stepping up to take this. It'd be a nice opportunity for the Jaguars to uh, just steal another goal here right before we go in for half with just two minutes and 45 seconds left to go here in the half. She's got her hand up, but she'll send the ball into play. Ball trickles out uh, right into the side of the net. It doesn't even get on the frame, so it was unfortunate for the Jaguars. Yeah, it wasn't one of Avery's best corners. Um, she usually whips that ball into dangerous areas. That's how Jag scored last week against Waukee Northwest, and Fortunately, that time it wasn't wasn't to be for Avery. Uh, this 22 from the Warriors has got a foot there. She's launched a couple into into the stratosphere here. Uh, number 22, Braddock. Yeah, Stella's. Um, she's a good center back. She's got a lot of range in her passing, and she's only a freshman as well. I believe she's a really good volleyball player as well for Bucky. Yeah, I would like to see Kroska take that up the field a little bit more instead of just sending it into a 50-50 with uh, Porter on that side right there. Make that uh, defender commit and then to make your decision on where you're going to be going for the for that next pass where somebody has some open open space. Yeah, it's a smart right now from the Jags. Uh, you know, Katie Compton could have maybe forced the ball forward there, but she decided to keep it and go inside to Emery and, you know, just kind of take some more seconds off the clock. Um handball there called on the Jaguars. They don't really need to, you know, take too many risks right now. There's only a minute left and now they've given away a kind of cheap free kick and it allows Stella to launch this right down the throat of the Jags deep defense here. Jaguars dodged a bullet as Bergen came out and just kind of mistimed uh, that bounce, but Braddock just put it into a super dangerous spot there. And uh, one of the uh, Warrior uh, offensive gals sent that ball over the top of the goalkeeper and 
the Jaguars have had about three different situations where they just eked out uh, making a save here at the end of the pretty much this last 10 minutes of the first half. Yeah, it's, I think there's something that needs to be addressed at halftime um, is every time Braddock's got the ball, the, the back line, and, and, and Evie Boyle should know because that's her centre-back partnership at club, um, that Stella can put that ball in behind. So they just got to drop off, and you know it just nullifies that. Well, that's the end of the first half. It's a 1-0 lead for the Jaguars. We'll be back in a few minutes with the Hyvie Halftime Report right after this. Soccer coverage on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, All-Star Concrete, Lincoln Savings Bank, member FDIC, Fiscus Jewelers, The Zoom Room Dog Training, Nick Jarosh Fitness, Knockerball 118, Wendy Thompson and Afraid of Humble Travel, and Reed Plumbing. Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, Weikert Realtors, the 515 Agency, 72 Degrees, your comfort company, Sinorama Ankeny, West 40 Market, Rainbow of the Heartland, Prairie Trail Sports Complex, Hearts of Ankeny Animal Hospital, the Ankeny Real Estate Group, and Cabaret Sports Bar and Grill. Everything we do is here to benefit the client. Every decision that's needed to be made, the first question you should ask is, does this, does this benefit the client and is this the best thing for the client? Our goal is to make a difference. We have the tools, resources, training, and leadership to make a difference in our agents' lives and their careers. And then they can then take that to make a difference in their clients' lives and ultimately make a difference in our community. We are available basically 24-7 to make sure that our agents are getting the support they need um, to look like a million bucks in front of their clients. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts, all raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Club. Beats is part of our People PE class who are recently recognized nationally as a national unified champion school and are on ESPN's top 25 honor roll for our inclusive work. Our Beats by Jags brings together students with disabilities with students without disabilities to create a rhythmic routine. Current routine was choreographed by Maddie Moen and Anna Sash. They are line leaders along with Izzy Bebout. Beats by Jags, are we ready to go? All right, here we go.
Jag fans, make some noise, big round of applause for our Beats by Jags.
There it is, the Beats by Jags here on our High V Halftime Report. Ankeny Centennial leading Waukee right now. 1-0 to zero, courtesy of a Katie Compton goal. Well, just a minute into the game, I think it was, when Katie hit the goal off an assist from Avery Porter. A great start to the for the Jaguars here tonight. Andy Pollock with you here in the studios for our High V Halftime Report. Also want to uh, be sure tonight to thank the Premier Sports Complex in Iowa. Prairie Trail Sports oh, Complex, they're open now. They've got a big event coming up Thursday night. It is Dudes Night at Ankeny or at uh, the Sports Complex there at Prairie Trail SC.com. Be sure to check them out. Uh, look around the state, just a, not a whole lot going on tonight. Uh, this is one of the very few games left as the postseason tournaments get started here in uh, just a couple days. We'll be back with second half action right after this. This has been the High V Halftime Report. Soccer coverage on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, All Star Concrete, Lincoln Savings Bank, member FDIC, Fiscus Jewelers, The Zoom Room Dog Training, Nick Josh Fitness, Mackerball 118. Wendy Thompson and Affiliate of Humble Travel, and Reed Plumbing. Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, Weikert Realtors, the 515 Agency. 72 Degrees, your comfort company. Sinorama Ankeny. West 40 Market. Rainbow of the Heartland. Prairie Trail Sports Complex. Hearts of Ankeny Animal Hospital. The Ankeny Real Estate Group. And Cabaret Sports Bar and Grill. When an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player, we have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. Well, we're just about 30, 35 seconds left to go here in the halftime show. Uh, thank you, Andy Pollock, uh, for uh, hitting that up for us. Uh, but we're back here as uh, they get set up for the second half. Uh, Jordan, you got to see a little bit of this the first half, but what are your thoughts going into the second here as, uh, as the uh, Jaguars nurse that 1-0 to zero lead here coming into the, yeah, uh, the second Jags, half? Yeah, Austin, the Jags are in a good spot right now. They've got one, they're up one goal, and they've got something to protect, something to, um, you know, to hold on to, um, but this game's not over yet. Um, it was pretty close from when I got here. Um, and Waukee are going to come at them here second half, so it's important that the Jags are ready. The next game's going to um, dictate the how this game's going to pan out. If Absolutely. it goes 2-0 Jags, I think that'll be enough, but if it goes 1-1, we could be in here for a long night. Yeah, I think in Waukee's, if anything, they've got to feel much more confidence coming into the second half with that little flurry of... Uh of uh, offensive play they had in about that last uh, five to ten minutes of the half. They've got to feel feel like they can at least uh, make an attack here and make something happen. Yeah, it's important that the Jags continue to switch on and, and use their experienced players to, to see this game through the second half. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Jordan. But a, a nice push here in the first, the beginning of the second half and, and to snag that second goal would be just crucial for... Uh, for the later parts of the game as well. Yeah, you know the the longer the the longer the game stays one zero, the better it is for Waukee. Um, there's always just that glimmer of hope that they can get a goal and. Well, and, and being the underdog, the being the underdog at an away game here at the end of the season, it's got to be what they're really playing for too. I mean, they've got to feel actually feel pretty good that it is just one zero 
coming into the uh, second half as well. They give give them a little bit of confidence as well as they get some possession here early in the second half. A long shot uh, goes to the left side of the uh, frame. You are watching Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital, driven by Freedom Tire. Visit one of our six locations for all of your automotive and tire service needs. And Bergen puts the ball in short here. As the Jaguars put some possession here, trying to get in midfield and give up a, a turnover right in the midfield. Another shot from the Warriors goes off to the right side. So we've seen one just quickly to the left, one quickly to the right. They're going to need to put one right down the middle to score a goal here for the Warriors. Yeah, there's two players on the Warriors that the Jags cannot let shoot from 30 yards out, and that's number four, McKay Coleman, and number eight, um, Jojo. You know, th those two can really punish the Jags from, from distance with a shot. It's important that, you know, Lana gets tight and and Hudacek gets tight on those two players as soon as he get the ball, especially in the attacking and the the Warriors attacking half. Well, we've had three off frame shots so far by the Warriors in the first uh, two minutes and fifty seconds here of the second half. It's uh, pretty much the flurry of action here that kind of ended up the way the first half kind of ended up there. Uh, so they're continuing some of the uh, attacking style that they had used at the end of the first half to get things going in their direction, but. Uh, the Jags are going to need to get this settled down and uh, get some possession and start to move the ball up the field into some open spaces to see what they can do. Yeah, we've, we've not been in the Warriors' half yet, the, the second half, so um, it's important that, you know, the, the game's played in waves. You know, you, you have to be prepared to, to ride the storm and, and sit, sit in and defend and, and make smart choices. And then because the Jags will get their chance, you know, they will get forward and, and they will get a chance to attack. The biggest thing is making sure that you don't concede when you're riding the wave. And it's not the player you want to give the ball to. Yep, she's definitely pushing that ball up. A little strong on the uh, touch there at the end. It uh, gets right into Bergen, and Bergen picks that ball up and puts it right back into play. Yeah, Becker done well. Just to give her a little nudge and, and just unbalance her and make her give up possession of the ball. But that, that you really don't want to let JoJo get into that position where she's running at well, your back line with the ball. Just an opportunity for that offensive player to try to draw a foul there too as she tries to split that two or three defenders that were right there. Yeah. You, you know, in your professional soccer, and your higher level soccer, you'll see that player go down a lot just trying to split that, trying to draw that foul. And it easily could have happened and give given some new life to the Warriors doing so. Not saying that we want to take a dive by any means, but um, you don't want to put them into a position where they have to crush down on that uh, pinch down in on there. She tries to split those defenders and see what happens for them. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it can be tactical and it's clever. If you can con the referee. Yep. <laughs> as they say. But with a 1-0 lead, I mean that that's a, it could be a detrimental piece of the game. It'll be the first corner of the uh, night for the Waukee Warriors. The corners are brought to you by the Iowa Rush Soccer Club. Check out all their events going on right now at iowarush.com. Oh, it'll be the Jaguar throw or corner kick. My bad there. Sorry about that. Yeah, it'll be Avery Lewis to go out, take it left-footed and swinging. Um, hopefully she can wrap her foot around this ball and put it into a dangerous area. Forgot that we flipped sides here, so I was thinking that was a Warrior kick, and uh, she puts it into play. Dangerous position. Porter gets it on her foot on the far side of the far post and just isn't able to get enough yeah, mustard I on it to send it to the right or left. I, I've, I've been in that position myself where Pennington looked like she was going to get her head on it and she missed it, and I think it took Porter by surprise. And it, it couldn't have felt any more perfect for Porter, but she just didn't quite get the connection. And as I say, I think the ball came to her really fast, um, and it was a surprise to her. But much, much better ball from Avery Lewis. That that's the that's the uh, Avery that we know that can deliver a 
a ball into the box from corners. Paint a nice little uh, piece of footwork there, but ends up uh, rolling the ball out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Warriors. Uh, yeah, she, she, she done really well just to hide the ball away from Havland, and, and but she she needed someone to come and help her. She needed someone to share the ball with, and fortunately she just ran it out of bounds. But she was unlucky. Yeah, it was some nice subtle just touches there, pulling that ball back and forth like a kind of like a had the ball on a string there and was able to uh, keep that ball for a few seconds there extra. Want to hear from anybody on uh, YouTube or uh, Facebook if you're watching the game tonight? Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to hear from anybody that's out there and uh, give a shout out onto the air for those of you that are watching from uh, far away or near or anything. It's a beautiful night out here tonight, but uh, if you're not able to get out here, throw us a comment in the messages and we'll uh, give you a shout out here. Malashita sends it down into Porter. Porter chests that ball down right down to her foot. Nice touch. Gets around her defender and takes her next defender one-on-one -on -one and beats her as well. And is just going to have a little bit too strong of a last touch there. And it rolls out the backside of the pitch. There's a really, really good bit of football there. And, you know, the the ability of Madison Balshiris to just prep that on her weaker left foot and, and ping it right into Porter. And then Porter taking it down on the go, on her, using her chest to bring the ball down, but on the go as well and running at defenders. You know, that's the... The version of Avery um, Porter that we're used to watching up here, um, and she was unfortunate just to take a heavy touch past. That's a lovely ball from Avery Lewis. Lewis into Martin. Martin stepping up and takes a long shot, but the goalkeeper uh, Needy, Nighty is right there and is able to gobble that one up and send it out short again into the Warriors. And the Jaguars take possession of it immediately. It's a kind of poor decision from Martin. I thought she should have maybe looked to pass to um, the advancing midfielder, um, Pennington, right there. Um, you know, Lord Knight is one of the best goalkeepers in the state. You're not going to beat her from there. Um, but especially Martin was a little bit off balance as well. She was trying to take the shot where if she had just played one more pass into Pennington, then I think Pennington has a better opportunity to beat um, Knight from there. Yeah, Knight was well positioned in... in defended that ball fairly easily as it rolled into her. Yeah, she's a very experienced goalkeeper for her age and she's uh she's a she's a basketball player as well, so you know, the like Jazz um over on the other side of the, the city with Hawks, like the goalkeepers who are basketball players do a good job with dealing with balls out of the air. Pennington with a nice uh steal there is able to corral the ball there and the Warriors send it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in deep in Warriors territory here for the Jaguars. Yeah, just a sophomore goalkeeper for the Warriors. She's going to be around for a couple more years with that. Uh, just got a real nice tall frame and, and is able yeah. to cover a lot of that of that uh, goalkeep there. Evie Boyle with that throw in, she did get a, a pretty good ball in there. Yeah, it's it's really dangerous, you know. Like even if you don't execute it perfectly, like it just sometimes just causes havoc. It just causes chaos, and and you know that ball bounces in and around your six yard box and in and around your penalty box. It's really difficult to defend. Yeah, parents and grandparents, check out Rainbow of the Heartland and Grimes for the best in swing sex, basketball hoops, courts, and trampolines. They also offer commercial playgrounds and have been Iowa's playground superstore for 25 years. Call 1-800-RAINBOW or visit rainbowoftheheartland.com. Milwaukee crowds getting into the game. Their fans are imploring their girls to uh, put that pressure up, especially in the offensive zone, trying to get a, an easy goal here. But uh, Balashitis did a nice job of just being calm, let that ball roll by her, and got good control of it and sent it over to the far side. Yeah, I know a lot of these Milwaukee players, and they're 
their personalities and their characters. They're they're not going to give up. You know, they're a feisty little team. They're they're hard working. You know, they're 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 going to compete and and battle all the way to the last whistle. And so you know, the ja- that's why the Jags it's so important not to switch off because they'll get their opportunity. If you're looking for a, a substitution coming into the game, number twenty, opportunity to get better, we can help you do that. Nick Jarosz with Nick Jarosz Fitness. We'll see you there. Number 20, Jade Thacker into the game. And number 15, Audrey Roods, a sophomore center forward, both into the game. It'll be a throw-in for the Warriors. And uh, the uh, referees coming over here to the near side. Looks like the co- talk to Coach Allen. <laughs> yeah, I think Coach Allen's going to have to have a word with his AD and pass on the message to the baseball guys but I think the baseball guys have taken the hint already and, and they're clearing the clearing the stadium or not so much the stadium but they're just clearing away from that yeah. far side and yeah so it looks like maybe uh, a <laughs> little bit overzealous fans on the far side of the field at the fence line there with the baseball boys just getting done and the center ref called over to the coach Allen and asked them to uh, move along and they did so hopefully the baseball coach isn't listening well, at least they're out there supporting their Jags. Compton with a nice little stroll into the baseline there. Draws a corner kick. Corner kicks tonight are brought to you by Do- our Iowa Rush Soccer Club. Check out all their events going on at now at iowarush.com. Be another opportunity for Lewis, and it looks like they're going to take a short one here because Compton's going out there as well. And one of the, you know, the good thing you, you take, put another player out there, it takes a player out of the box as well. Nice ball there. Yep. To go over the top of the pit, uh, frame there, and looks like it'll be another corner kick for the Jags as the uh, Balashida sends the ball out and blasts one of the Waukee defenders as she's trying to get the ball back out to Avery Lewis again. Great ball from Avery Lewis, yeah, though. The Dangerous last, position. The last two crosses have been excellent. It's, they're just begging for someone to get their head on the end of it. Another, another beautiful ball. one, but the goalkeeper rises up above the uh, scrum. Uh, and Knighty snatches that one out of the air and sends it down the field. Yeah, it was really good goalkeeping from Knighty, and that just shows you the level of goalkeeper that she is. Um, there's not many players in this state can can deal with that type of ball. Tons of traffic in front of her and, and chaos in front of her, and she just rose up above and controlled that cleanly and uh, sent it right out. Yeah. Coach, we had senior night tonight as Ava Martin heads, uh, tries to head a ball down to her. Uh, you've been around a lot of these seniors uh, for the Jaguars over the course of the years with your uh, your club connections and then actually commentating up here as well. Is uh, Any fond memories you have of this group at all? Is this... Yeah, no, I've got some great memories, and it, it makes me feel a little bit old um, that they're moving on. But I'm, I'm really, really proud of, of a lot of them, and um, they're going to do great things. and. Um, it's you know they're they're good soccer players and but it, more importantly they're just good people lost and they're really good kids and um, it's been a joy to to work with them and, and just be a, a small part of their journey and I wish them all the best and they'll be they'll be sadly missed yeah it's a strong group I mean I think uh, I was trying to look at the group there I think we have at least four or five uh, going on to play soccer at the next level it's an exciting uh, exciting time for them and uh, uh, kind of a, a a sad part for the program as well, seeing a lot of these girls move on to the next level. Yeah, and it was, again, another phenomenal delivery from Avery Lewis and Katie Compton, one of our seniors, just almost got on the end of it there. But, you know, d- delivering a ball from that angle and putting it right in behind the back line and making the centre-backs face their own goal, it's really difficult to defend that. 
We got Braddock once again stepping up here to put the ball into orbit here. Compton uh, or Ava, Ava Martin down there fighting for the possession. She commits a foul down there. It'll be a free kick. Yeah, it's just a you know a good little deal, one v one deal in the corner there between Braddock and and uh, Ava Martin and Avery. Just uh, sorry, Ava just a little bit too ag over aggressive. Allows Braddock to. She just does it so easily, yeah. too. It's just a three-step attack there, and she just really gets the – I don't think we've seen anybody do that at all this year of the games that we've covered. No, it's definitely one of her strengths is, is her range of passing. and the Between Braddock's range of passing and Stella's range of throwing, it's <laughs> the two of them together are a handful. Lewis a little too handsy on the 50-50 uh, ball there. Sends her defender down, and it's a uh, foul on her. It'll be a free kick for the Warriors. I'm just laughing at Coleman and Lewis. The two of them are really good friends and club teammates, and as, as they went into that deal, they, at the end of it, they were laughing and messing with each other. And they, that's two players that constantly go against each other in practice. Not a good free kick for the Warriors. He sends it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Jaguars. Porter to Pennington. Ping to Kroska. Kroska sends it down to Compton. Compton trying to chase it down and doesn't get it there. And it just barely goes out of bounds for a throw in for the Warriors. I think we're, you know, we're just slowly starting to enter the kind of business end of the game right now. Uh, it's, you know, again, it's, it's the Jags are in a great position that they have that one goal and they've got something to hold on to. Um, you know, fatigue's going to start to kick in. Um, so that's gonna, you know, that's gonna jeopardize some decision making, and it's important that, you know, Centennial try. This would be an ideal chance for Centen or time for Centennial to get a second goal here. I really think it could kill the game. Yeah, I think uh, Jordan, as you were stating earlier in the first half, they've ridden that first wave that Waukee kind of pushed yeah. up and was riding high, and and now are able to kind of settle down and get back into their game and. And uh, Porter with a 50-50, physical 50-50, and uh, draws the corner kick. Yeah, the, the last five, ten minutes, you know, Centennial has been camped inside of the Warriors' uh, half. And you can see the Waukee Warriors are, you know, they're starting to tire a little bit. They, you know, they, they have a few inexperienced players that are playing lots of minutes. And Lewis putting the corner kick into play. Pennington had that settled right on her knees and dropped down right in front of her, but wasn't able to get a shot off. Yeah, so close just from, it just didn't fall quick enough for her to get herself adjusted to get a shot off. And then Hudicek uh, settles the ball up on top and takes a quick shot as well, and it's uh, sent right into the goal keep. Seems like the play's gotten a little bit more physical in the last few minutes as well. I've seen some of those 50-50 clashes have been a little bit more hardcore is uh you're going to slowly start to see the game get stretched open nice pass over to porter porter one touch right footed kick just over the top of the up to the keep there holy cow nice little touch and a shot West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. A couple substitutions just came into the game. Those are brought to you by Dr. Stacy Munger and the crew of Heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital. Avery Porter on that last attack, she done really, really well just to come inside on her favoured right foot and she was unfortunate just to put it over the bar, but really good chance, really, really good chance there. But with her capabilities and her standards, she'd probably be looking to do better there, at least at the target. 
What I liked about that one was that the touch was right down to the foot and the, and the shot yeah, was immediately very, after very, that. There was no very hesitation. Good, yeah, very good prep touch and it allowed her to get a good shot off. Unfortunately, just a little bit too much of a shot. Lewis, nice little chip shot right in front of the goalkeeper, right in front of the uh, box. It's sent down by the Warriors. Balashitis with a touch, sends it back out to Lewis. I know there's a, a bit of a break before the next game, but the last thing you want to be doing tonight is going into overtime. Absolutely. You, know, you want to get in and get out here. And Absolutely. I don't think any of the two teams probably want to go to overtime. But, you know, you go into overtime, you just ask the girls to put their bodies through another extra few minutes that they don't need to be putting them putting it through, especially this late in the season. What a potential for some mental heartbreak as well. You yeah, know, going just, into a crucial part want, of the season. You want to avoid it. And again, I think Coach Allen will have a, a, a decision to make here whether, you know, he maybe just starts to think more defensively and sit in and, and not so much sit deep, but just sit a little bit more compact um, and make it really difficult for the Warriors to get forward. You know, some coaches will say the best defense is the good offense, and they seem to have been push, being able to push that ball up. But I love how she's taking away some of this space here and making that defender commit to her before she decides on where that pass is going. Nice job by Porter, sending it right back to her nice center. Nice little ball to the outside. Got some open room. Takes a looping shot and just not on frame and Porter just wasn't able to be there on the far pole to uh, be able to help out with that at all. Yeah, Con Conger knew she wasn't going to run any further with the ball so it was a good opportunity, it was a good decision to shoot um, and you know she's trying to go up and over the goalkeeper but just didn't quite get it on the frame. Friends, check out the new Zoom Room Dog Training Gym at 1875 North Ankeny Boulevard. We don't train dogs, we train the people that love them at the Zoom Room. Send us a pic of your dog at Jags Digital on Twitter or on our Centennial Digital Facebook page, and each week we'll choose a pet of the week to get a special gift from the Zoom Room. Bonus points if they're watching Centennial Digital. Gabby Lawrence just needed to show a little bit more there for Avery, just give her an option. She's done it this time though for Balshiris. Yeah, when she had come in earlier in the first half, uh, Jordan, she just looked like a shark out there, just just uh, waiting for somebody to get her a ball to just be on the attacking end of that. And I haven't seen that yet here in the second half, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing her uh, try to get an opportunity here. Yeah, she, she's growing into the game <coughs> um, this season. You know, she's getting more and more confident as, as she's getting more and more minutes, so it's... You know that's always a good sign, and you know if you, once you get to postseason, you you re, that's when you really need your squad. Some nice rotations from the Milwaukee Warriors building out of the back here. They're they're getting so far forward, but then just can't seem to quite connect into the into the attacking half. But some lovely bit of play from the, from the back up to the almost the middle there. Well, with all this offensive pressure that uh, Jaguars are able to put there, it's harder for them to get those forwards up the field until until they get that ball up there, and they just haven't been able to get the ball up there yeah. to and stretch out that defense at all. It's a similar trend between the the Jags and the Warriors. Like they they both just not quite got that forward who is going to turn a back line and, and really be a handful up there. Xavier Porter, a nice couple touches here, takes it back into the center of the field, looking for an opportunity to score again, takes a shot. Knighty in the right spot at the right time, just easily takes that one out of the air. Wanted to call out some of the people who made some comments here. Uh, Easton Becker says, let's go, Emery Becker, number 12 for the Jags. Her favorite brothers call her, uh, uh, texting in from Milwaukee. Thanks for watching. And Stephen Carroll Fair watching from St. Louis. Looking for Addison Fair to make the next goal for the Jags. We appreciate you commenting and, and being a part of our broadcast for the night. Okay, McKay Coleman just not really got a forward option. 
So you decided to turn it and go back the way. Nice connection up there, and Evie Boyle just steps up and closes the door on that uh, pass. I think this is maybe some of that smarter play we were talking about, Coach. Is, yeah, uh, this is good from the Jags. Like, even right here, like, and again, it's another good decision from Becker. She, they don't need to go forward. You know, they're 1-0 they're up. Like, just keeping the ball around the back here and, and forcing, you know, just be patient. Let the Warriors come out, and then as soon as they come out, then then look to try to execute behind. Yeah, and what uh, Coach Burns is talking about is the, as we see this ball hopefully drop back to the uh, back here. We'll we'll talk about it here in a second when we when we see that set up again. We'll kind of walk our viewers through what uh, Coach Burns is talking about. It's just important to really take care of the ball and don't force it. Just make simple choices. Ooh, a uh, nice little pull of the jersey there on the, uh, oh, come on, uh, AR there. She just jerked uh, whoever was on that far side trying to make that run. Maybe uh, Compton? I'm not sure who it was out there, but. Uh, Got a couple substitutions for both teams coming in. The substitutions of today's game are brought to you by Dr. Stacy Munger and the crew of Heart of Ankeny Animal Hospital. And for the Jaguars, number 16, Ava Park. Martin and Compton back into the game for the Jags. Yeah, I'm not sure if I would have brought Compton back on, to be honest. I think just getting her and Porter off the field and keep it. I think the Jags are good with what they have coming on. Again, this is this is the situation that we want to avoid, is just forcing balls into an area that we don't need to force it into. And allowing yeah. players like JoJo to take a shot. Yeah, and, and Coach Burns, this is kind of what we're talking about, is we're looking to have that back line, have those forwards commit up the field to open it up a little bit. And then the Waukee Warriors are, are, are fine sitting back and just relaxing, and, and we're forcing that ball up the field. They, they did a good job this time of doing it a little bit better this time. Yeah, I mean, the three players in the middle of the field there are very good ball players, Pennington and Kroska and Becker. Like, between the three of them, they, can, they should be able to keep the ball themselves. Pennington with a nice pressure uh, gets a uh, ball to get kicked out of bounds it'll be a throw in for the Jaguars Lewis takes the throw in connects with Martin Martin to Pennington yeah the, 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 you can really see both teams are starting to tire and very very fatigued and you know it's it's a long season. There's a lot of games in a short period of time, and just the intensity levels are not not a, not as high as they were, you know, in the first half. Yep. Balashitis is able to get back in behind and sweep that ball out of there. Takes it up the field. Here's the great examples. Those warrior, those warrior forwards are just sitting back, and we want those forwards to start to step up and, and pressure up onto our, our back line to open up that first line in the field here. But the, the Warriors are, are, are set to just be able to sit there and, and wait for us to move the ball up the field. So that's exactly what we want to see. And if we have to, we can cycle it all the way across, back and forth every time, just to waste that time and, and make them commit up forward to the field. Yeah, like there, there's no reason... When you're up 1-0, there's no reason to, you know, force it forward. You, you just need to keep the ball, and it's up to the Warriors to then go, right, well, what are you going to do? We're just yeah. going to keep it here. They're they're the one chasing the game, or, or less the Warriors are quite happy just to get out out of the game without without the win. You know, I thought, oh, it looked a little bit interesting for a second. Laura here, proud to be the team for all your legal needs. Just a reminder to stick around after the game for the LGL player of the game. Go Jags! Yeah, I want to also be sure to welcome our new supporters, the Centennial Digital and the Jaguar student athletes, Dr. Brett Renzi at Health First Chiropractic, Springer Floor Care, and your local Ankeny High V stores.
and Kroska done really well just to come over there and, and quickly snuff out the danger. She's a little bit unlucky there with her with her first touch. With her second touch, sorry there. You know, what the Warriors are in a situation now, it's like do they just see do they just continue to see the game out how they're playing or you know, do they roll the dice a little bit and, and throw a couple of forwards up, you know, maybe some get players from the back or midfield and, and kind of gamble and go for it and try to put the Jags under pressure? You know, at, the, at this point, you know, there's not really anything to lose now for the Warriors. But I'm sure Coach Allen will be happy if they continue to do what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, state placements are set. The records are pretty much set. Obviously, you'd like some momentum to, oh, nice. Balashitis gives up a ball here. And sends it across to the Guaki Warriors. Had an excellent opportunity and just a whiff from uh, the four, the uh, Warrior forward there. And the the Jaguars just dodged a huge bullet. Yeah, the Jags have gotten away with one again. It's it's Rita Daner, you know, running forward from midfield. You know, there's not much more that you can do. You just the, the, it's on a plate for her. She just has to cipher it into the net, and unfortunately, she's for her. She's put it wide, and fortunately for the Jags, yeah. they've gotten away with another one. There's been a two or three moments now from from Waukee that they've, you know, missed some really good opportunities, and the Jags have gotten away with it. I mean, we're to change the whole match in, yep. in a matter of yeah, uh, ten, ten seconds off of uh, just a busted play there, and. Again, it just comes from another mistake from, from the back line. And, and that's something that they've got to clean up in their game. Um, the two young centre-backs, Balshiris and Boyle, you know, the two of them have some really, really good moments and some excellent moments. But then now and again, they just still seem, you know, still have just a little bit of lack of concentration or just switch off for a second. But, you know, it's part of the process of becoming a better player. Looking for a runner to cut here for Martin to find. Yeah, so you look to see these Warriors. I mean, let's just sit on the ball back here and just make them step up. If they're not going to step up. We don't need to move the ball up, but we move the ball up here. And not a bad ball from Malachitis. Gets into some open space. Martin's trying to pressure up. They send it back to the keep. She's not going to be able to pick that one off with a direct pass. But she takes it with her feet and uh, plays it out. If I, oh, was Brad, yeah. if nice I was job. Braddock, I would just be putting that ball over the centennial back line every single Well, that's time. what I, I would like. Heck, I'd like to see her move up for the Warriors and, and be a little bit more in the midfield maybe to start yeah. to put those balls in. But uh, and, and, you know, that's maybe something that the uh, – that's maybe something that they think about in this last five minutes, you know, like maybe gambling and putting Braddock a little bit higher and – if you know if the ball, you know you can see how far she can, she can ping it from back there. If she can maybe shoot from the thirty yard line, forty yard line. Good opportunity for Compton to uh, take the ball forward with some space. She gets taken down again. Looks like they're going to stop the clock. We may have a card here as uh, she was uh, moving towards the goal. Yeah, and that will be the end of her night because, well, she Just might get 54 five seconds. Five minutes and 54 seconds end. left. You know, it's not an ideal player for the Walkie Warriors to lose. Is that Braddock that they lost? No, I, no? I believe it's JoJo that's coming off. Okay. Um, you know, it's not It's not a player. That, that's not the player you want to take that foul. Yeah, especially the last five minutes of the game, but, you know, that's going to be her night. She takes the five minutes. And, but, you know, that's a, it's a good um, situation for the Jags. Um, that's one less dangerous player dangerous out there. player that they've got yeah. to worry about in this last five minutes. Nice ball in. Oh, that was a quick whistle, was it not? 
Yeah, you know, I think maybe just timed the run a little bit too early. I think I don't think Pennington was offside. I think it was more Porter. Yeah. Um, Pennington could have done a bit better there. Maybe just stuck her head on it. Warriors send it out of bounds. It'll be a throw-in for the Jaguars. Just five minutes left to go here in the game. A 1-0 lead for the Jaguars. Now that that's a that's one pass that you really don't want to play. It's a square pass right a, right through your midfield, and you're just asking for trouble. That they they've managed to survive it and adapt to deal with it. England. Yeah. Yeah, he's south of the border for me. Nice ball into space for Martin. Knighty comes out and makes a great save off of Martin. A nice little uh, touch pass in there for Martin to get a shot. Yeah, it was a lovely sliding pass down down the outside and good good time run from Eva. You just maybe looking to just chip it over Lauren there. She's always going to come down low, so sometimes it's good to try to lift it there. But the weight of that uh, assist pass was just yeah, beautiful. Yeah, perfect. Put it right perfect. on. You don't see that a lot in the, the high school game, a nicely weighted ball like that, but it was a perfect position. As the Warriors try to put together a couple passes and have a shot on goal, and uh, Bergen uh, puts the end to that. Compton uh, snakes that one around her defender and it speeds down the far sidelines. It's going to look like she's going to get a center and off of her foot, it'll be a corner kick for the Jaguars. Corner kicks are brought to you by Iowa Rush Soccer Club. Check out all their events going on right now at iowarush.com. And that's the, the areas you want to get Compton in, these 1v1 wider areas. Um, She's up against a really good defender in Braddock. Any big events going on with Iowa Rush right now, Jordan? I know you guys just uh, finished up the Mother's Day tournament for a lot of yeah, individuals yeah, down in Kansas some, City. We had some teams down in Kansas City um, at the Mother's Day. Um, we've got some league games this weekend. And then Club State Cup will start for our um, U13 and 14 teams. And then um, we'll, we'll have a, a few more league games after that. And then we'll wrap up for the season and then... We'll, um, we'll go into our tryout um, phase for, for next season. Wonderful. So, yeah, kind of coming, winding down to the end of the spring season and getting ready for the summer. Now, is the State Cup here in uh, county this uh, year? The first weekend is in Waverly um, at our Iowa Rush North location. Um, Waverly are hosting the first weekend, and then the second weekend is here in West Des Moines at Regplex. Lewis putting the ball in, headed out by the Warriors. Compton with a steal. She centers that ball in. The goalkeeper gets a hand on the ball and it bounces around a little bit, but then she gains possession of it and gets it out of trouble for the Warriors. Yeah, Nidy showing her basketball skills there <laughs> inside the box to retrieve the ball. She kind of did dribble the ball there for a yeah. couple times as she gained control of it. Yeah, you know, that that's one advantage of being a multi-sport athlete is you can sometimes use some of your tools and skills from other sports and apply them to... Yep, she rebounded yep. the rebounded the corner kick earlier in the game and then dribbled the ball out of trouble there as well as uh, Pennington uh, wins another corner kick as uh, Lewis sits up. I think she's going to probably take this one short to Porter, but it looks like she's going to step back and let loose on this one again. Lewis sends it into play. Pennington with a touch, sends it out to Compton. Compton tees it up. Second goal of the game for Katie Compton. Two minutes left to go in the game. 2-0 lead for the Jaguars. Pennington got a little bit of control of that, sent it up to the top of the box, and Compton was there ready to put the ball away. Yeah, it's exactly what the Jags wanted with two minutes to go. Um, they've been knocking, you know, for the last 15 minutes now, and 
Uh, again, another good delivery in the box. Pennington does really well to just maintain the ball and and make a really smart decision. Um, she was calm, she was collective, she was patient, and she just laid it into Compton. Um, and really good finish from Compton, just passed it into the bottom corner. And you know, I think everybody on the Jack side of the stadium, including Coach Allen, will take a sigh of relief now. And I think that'll be enough to get the Jags over the line with two minutes to go. And it's good to you know Compton to get a, a double um, on senior night. You know that that's always pleasing to see and. It's, it was a really good finish from her. I think that's goal number seven and number eight uh, for the uh, Jaguar, or for uh, Kitty Compton for the season. There's not a better feeling as a head coach when your team scores a second goal with two minutes to go. And it just, you know, it just puts a lot of, takes away a lot of stress, takes away a lot of anxiety. And, you know, you can just enjoy the last couple of minutes of the game. Well, looks like I got a free kick for the Warriors here as uh, they try to decide who's taking it. I can't believe they're not putting Braddock on the ball right here to put a moonshot into the uh, yeah, I mean, the frame here. But uh, she Col is one of the taller players, I guess, here as well. Yeah, Col Coleman's uh, got really good range as well. She's capable of scoring from here also if she can connect with it. One minute remaining in the second half. Compton with the easy save. You know, the, the, this Warrior team, they, as I said earlier, they, they work hard, they battle, they make it uncomfortable for you. They're, you know, they're just lacking one or two um, players in the forward positions that could help them. But I tell you, if this team, if if the Warriors can get to state, then it, it's, it's another really strong team that you don't want to come up against. Pennington with a throw in. Porter's going to take her time, chucking this throwing in with just 20 seconds left to go here in the game. The Jags will send it out of bounds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, that's the end of regulation. A two to win, two to zero win for the Jaguars. The last regulation game of the season. They beat the number 10 Waukee Warriors here at the Ankeny Centennial Soccer Pitch. Jordan, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this heading into Substate Week here this this next week. Uh, they're going to play the winner of an of a earlier game and uh, pick it up again on Friday. I think Coach Allen's got to feel good about uh, just the momentum going into that game coming yeah, up. Yeah, it's, it's a really big win for the Jags, you know, coming off the back of um, a, a couple of defeats. It's good to get back to winning ways. Um, they played well tonight. They were definitely the better team. Um, they, they thoroughly deserved their win. Um, scored a couple of good goals. Senior Compton getting the goals on senior night. And, you know, both teams will, will rest up. They'll, they'll regroup um, and they'll get ready to start Substate. Yeah, I'll just kind of go over the uh, schedule for Substate here. We'll have uh, Iowa City West and Des Moines Lincoln playing at Iowa City West uh, on the 19th uh, for the chance to play up against the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. That game will be, we'll take the winner of that game on the 23rd uh, here at the pitch, and we'll be covering that game for Centennial Digital, so we'll welcome you all back to see some post, uh, postseason soccer for the Jaguars. And then on the opposite side of the bracket will be the Bettendorf uh, and Prairie matchup on, uh, out at uh, Bettendorf, and then we'll, the winner of those two games will meet up in the uh, regional finals. So yeah. some exciting games coming up. No, it's exciting. This is the business end of the season. This is where, you know, there, there'll be happy memories, there'll be sad memories, and, you know, it's up to, it's up to you. You write your own script, and, you know, I think it's a good time for the players to rest. I think that's the most important thing right now is rest, collect yourself um, and, you know, reset and go again because this is it. You know, the, the season's going to ramp back, ramp up again and I'm excited to walk, get out and watch some some quality games. Yeah, I see the trainers uh, with their bags of ice uh, rolling around and trying to get those handed out to some of the girls to get some of those injuries recouped. Uh, Lamberti Goki and Lucci player of the game. I think uh, we have to give it to Katie Compton yeah. with, a, with a pair of goals tonight. Uh, was well assisted on both of them, uh, one from Pennington and one from uh, um, Porter in the first half as well. So some great assists as well to contribute to that, but it's a great night for her. Yeah, really good night for Compton, and she thoroughly deserves that. Um, Played of the match on senior night, um, and it's yeah, you know, it was a good game, really good game. Um, 
the Warriors came with a bit of fight and you know they, they've got good personalities and character in the team I don't think this will be the last time we'll see the Warriors this season so um, really happy for coach Allen and the Centennial Jags um, for getting back to winning ways um, and they, as you say they, they can use that now as momentum um, as they head into postseason. Well, thanks for watching tonight. Again, the final score was 2-0. to zero. Uh, And our next production of Ankeny Centennial, digit, driven by Freedom Tire, will be next Friday for that sub-state match. Is that right, Andy? Tuesday. Tuesday next week? Okay, it'll be Tuesday of next week. Uh, if you can make it out there, we'll see you there. Here, see you here. If you can't, as always, you can catch all home games right here or on the CISN Network YouTube channel. Uh, I'm Austin Oliver with Jordan Burns, and we appreciate everybody coming out, and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys later. It's time to head to the cabaret. Soccer coverage on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, All Star Concrete, Lincoln Savings Bank, member FDIC, Fiscus Jewelers, The Zoom Room Dog Training, Nick Tarash Fitness, Knockerball 118, Wendy Thompson and Afraid of Humble Travel, and Reed Plumbing. Jaguar Soccer on Centennial Digital is driven by Freedom Tire and brought to you by these generous local businesses. Lamberti Goki Lucci Law, Weikert Realtors, the 515 Agency, 72 Degrees, your comfort company, Sinorama Ankeny, West 40 Market, Rainbow of the Heartland, Prairie Trail Sports Complex. Arts of Ankeny Animal Hospital, the Ankeny Real Estate Group, and Cabaret Sports Bar and Grill. So when an athlete walks into Nick Garage Fitness, the one thing we want them to know is that this is a phenomenal community. We have the best coaching. We have the best technology. We have the, the programming that can help them succeed. So whether it's trying to get on JV for the first time, going to that next level on varsity, going from a, a second string to you know an all-state player. We have the tools, we have the, the programming and the coaching in order to take each individual to their next level. West 40 Market in Uptown Ankeny is your place to shop for the best meats, steaks, brats, jerky, and everything in between. Let us be your one-stop shop for all your favorite cuts. All raised on local Iowa farms. Shopping local never tasted so good. Everything we do is here to benefit the client. Every decision that's needed to be made, the first question you should ask is, does this, does this benefit the client and is this the best thing for the client? Our goal is to make a difference. We have the tools, resources, training, and leadership to make a difference in our agents' lives and their careers. And then they can then take that to make a difference in their clients' lives and ultimately make a difference in our communities. We are available basically 24-7 to make sure that our agents are getting the support they need um, to look like a million bucks in front of their clients. DeArmond certified used vehicles aren't the same as the rest. Every DeArmond certified vehicle receives a 175 point inspection and comes with a 12 month, 12,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, a two year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, and DeArmond Care. Wheel, dent, windshield repair, repel paint and windshield protection, and a full tank of fuel. Buy with confidence, knowing you made a wise decision with DeArmond certified. Find DeArmond certified used vehicles at DeArmondFord.com.